Hey, how you doing Econ students? This is Jacob Clifford and welcome to ACDC Econ. If you've seen these videos before, you know exactly what we're doing. It is time to practice. If you have not learned elasticity, go learn elasticity, then come back and practice with this video. But before we get into it really quickly, let me get serious here. This is my full-time job, making YouTube videos and selling the ultimate review pack and making teacher resources, doing workshops for her econ teachers. This is what pays the healthcare and my mortgage and all that stuff. So please do me a couple favors. Number one, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Even if you're not, you know, gonna watch the videos every single week, subscribing tells YouTube that I'm making good stuff and it helps the channel continue. So please do that. Also, go get the ultimate review packet. It's great great way to learn. It's a great way to say thank you for making these videos, uh, but basically it gives you summary videos that cover the entire course, micro and macroeconomics. Take a look, the description is below. But either way, whatever you do, thank you for being here and watching this video, you rock. Now on a completely different note, we're talking about elasticity, but I'm not gonna cover the midpoint formula. Your professor or teacher might have shown you that. It's basically a, a more accurate way to find out if the demand is elastic or inelastic, and we're not gonna do that in this video. If you want, a separate midpoint formula video, tell me in the description below and I will make that for you. But this one, we're talking about the general idea of elasticity. For most of you in class, you probably covered four different types of elasticity. Elasticity of demand, elasticity of supply, cross price elasticity of demand, and income elasticity of demand. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. I'm gonna give you seven practice questions. Your job, answer these questions, see if you're getting it. If you can do these calculations and answer these questions, then you understand it. And if you don't, that's okay. Try your best and I'll go over the answer. So right now, pause the video, see if you're getting it. Ready and good luck. In question one, it's asking you to use the total revenue test to figure out if the demand's elastic or inelastic given these numbers. Now, first thing I want you to notice, like the price went up from 20 to 25 and the quantity went down, which is exactly what happens because the law of demand. So price went up, quantity went down. We're not asking, and the question's not asking you what's gonna happen to quantity when the price goes up. It's asking what happens to total revenue, right? The, the, does total revenue go up or does total revenue go down? So in this case, notice the price started at 20, 20 times 10 is $200, and then the price went up to 25, and the quantity went down to five, 25 times five is $125, so the total revenue went down when the price went up. And if the total revenue goes down and the price goes up, that means this demand curve is relatively elastic. Now, if you've seen my other video, I gave you a trick at the end to help you remember the total revenue test using your arms. Uh, take a look at that if uh, you've never seen it before. So you do have to like remember that, but the concept makes sense. The idea here is this. If the price goes up, in this case, you know, uh, from 20 to 25, and the quantity decreased a whole lot more. So price went up, yeah, it did, but the quantity decreased a whole lot. That means the total revenue is gonna get smaller, and so that's why this is elastic demand. But let's say the quantity only fell down to nine, right? It went from 10 to nine, so I'm changing the question here. The total revenue in this case would actually go up, right? So price would go up and total revenue would go up. So that would be inelastic demand if the numbers were different. So notice, no matter what, whether it's elastic or inelastic, price goes up, the quantity goes down, the total revenue test is not analyzing the quantity at all. It's talking about the total revenue test, right? What happens to the total revenue when the price goes up? But in question number two, you have to actually do the calculations of something called the elasticity of demand coefficient. Now the good news is the equation's easy to remember. It's the percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. Now notice, the biggest mistake students make right here is to go, well, the price went up by five and the quantity decreased by five, so it's five over five, which is one, I'm done. No, right? Remember, this is not the change in price. It's not the change in quantity. It's the percent change. So you have to actually calculate the percent change in the quantity and the price. That's going to give you the right answer. Quantity is on top. So the change in quantity went from 10 to 5. That's a decrease of 50%. And the price in this case went up by $5. And $5 is one fourth or 25% of 20, so here it is. It's negative 50, because remember, the quantity decreased, uh, divided by 25%. So 50% divided by 25%, we can actually do some calculations and find out that's negative two. Now, first thing I want you to point out and know is the elasticity of demand coefficient is always negative. It's always negative because of the law of demand, right? Price is gonna go up and quantity is gonna go down. So it's a negative number, but we usually ignore that when we're analyzing if it's elastic or inelastic. So just do the absolute value. And the absolute value here tells you that it's a, a number that's greater than one. If this number is greater than one, then that means the demand is elastic 
for apples, which we already knew because of the answer to question one. Remember in question one, we said the demand is elastic using this whole revenue test. And this tells us it's also elastic because the elasticity of demand coefficient is greater than one. So there you go. Both the total revenue test and the elasticity of demand coefficient are telling us the same thing. Remember, if the elasticity of demand is greater than one, then it's elastic demand. If it's one, it's unilastic. And if it's less than one, then it's inelastic. And that makes sense, right? The number means something, but in demand, we're talking about the absolute value of you know, that number because the elasticity demand coefficient will always be negative because of the law of demand. Okay, in question three, we're switching from demand to supply. Now you have new numbers. It said the price went up from 20 to 25 and the quantity supplied increased from 10 up to 25. Now the good news is it's the same equation. Exactly the same equation, except this time it's the percent change in the quantity supplied divided by the percent change in price. So it's really just the same equation, uh, but you're just changing, are you looking at demand, or in this case, are you looking at supply? So the change in the quantity, well, it went from 10 to 25, right, and 15, yeah, so it's a, it went up by 15, and so 15 is 150% of 10, and so the change in quantity is 150%, and we already know the change in price because we already did it earlier, it's a change in 25%. So you do some calculations, you figure out that it's positive six. That means that there's a positive correlation between price and the quantity supplied, which of course you know that because that's the law of supply, right? Price goes up, the quantity supplied will always go up, right? So this number will always pop out a positive number. Now, since the number is greater than one, that means the supply is elastic, right? Greater than one is elastic. So same idea as before. If you know there's a small change in quantity because a big change in price, that'd be inelastic supply. If the answer is one, it's unilastic. And if the number pops out number greater than one, that means it's elastic supply. In question number four, I'm just trying to clarify a concept. You can't use the total revenue test to figure out the elasticity of supply. And the reason why is because, take a look, when the price goes from 20 up to 25, the quantity increases. So the total revenue, the size of the box, is always gonna go up. When the price goes up, total revenue automatically is gonna go up. When the price goes down, total revenue is gonna go down. So the price and the total revenue are directly related. They will always go up or down together. So the point here is this. Just understand you can use the total revenue test for demand, you cannot use the total revenue test for supply. In question number five, we're switching again. We've already covered demand and supply. Now we're talking about cross price elasticity. And it says uh, there's an increase in the price of apples and that decreases the quantity demanded of vanilla ice cream, a different product. So now we're analyzing the relationship between uh, the apples and the vanilla ice cream. And it says, are these two things substitutes or complements? The answer is they're complements. The reason why is they're negatively related. In other words, the price went up for the apples and people bought less of the ice cream. So a negative number pops out, uh, means it's a compliment. Also, it makes sense because when the price goes up for apples, people are like, well, apples are more expensive. The coin demand is gonna decrease for apples, but people are also, in this case, says that people are not gonna go buy ice cream either. So the coin demand falls for the ice cream, so that means they must be compliments. Now, if it said people bought more ice cream, then they'd be substitutes to each other. So that's what we're talking about here. When it comes to cross price elasticity, we're analyzing are these two things substitutes or complements to each other? And that'll all make more sense when we do question six. It says assume the increase of price of apples increase the quantity demanded of a different product, peaches, from 20 tons to 30 tons. So now you have some numbers to work with. You have to actually calculate the cross price elasticity demand coefficient. The good news, it's the same equation, right? Percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. Except the difference here is it's the change in quantity of one product as a result of the change in price of a completely different product. Now, the last two times we did this, it was, you know, the change in the price of your product has it affect the quantity demanded or the quantity supplied. Now it's a change in price of one product, in this case, the change in Apple's price, and then how does that affect peaches? So, same equation, first do the calculation for the quantity. Uh, the quantity went from 20 to 30, that's an increase of 50%, and the price increased 25%, and that pops out a positive two. So, it turns out those numbers were the same as question number two. It's the exact same equation, and it's the same number, right? In this case, two, except it's not negative, it's positive. So you've actually seen these numbers before. So in other words, if you had a hard time calculating, like I don't know how to do the math, but you just did this back in question number two. So hopefully you had a chance to check yourself. The concept is what I'm talking about now. That positive number means something. 
Back in question two, the elasticity demand coefficient was negative two, right? But we said, ah, just look at the absolute value. The negative sign doesn't really matter because the law of demand, don't worry about it. In this one, the positive really matters. In this case, these two goods are substitutes for each other, right? If the price went up for one, that means people bought more of the other one, right? So if price goes up for apples, people buy more peaches, that means they must be substitutes for each other, right? People stop buying the apples, they go buy more peaches instead. So if you see a positive number, that means it's substitutes. One way to look at it is right here, kind of think of a number line. Uh, the cross price elasticity, if it's positive, it's uh, substitutes. If it's negative, it's a complement. If it's zero, that means they're not related, right? If there's no change in quantity from a change in price. So if the, you know, the price of uh, uh, MacBooks go up, and there's no change in the quantity of tires, then MacBooks and you know tires are unrelated. There's no relationship between them at all, right? They're, they're not substitutes, not complements, they're nothing. So zero means no relationship. Uh, the, the higher the number, so a positive one or a positive five or a positive 100, you know, positive 100 means they're really strong substitutes. You know, a negative one means a complement, but you know, not very strong. Negative two, stronger. Negative 100 means they're, you know, super close complements to each other, like, you know, milk and cereal or hot dog and hot dog buns. Okay? So that's the idea of cross price elasticity. And in question number seven, we finish it off. Now we're talking about income elasticity. So we're not talking about the price of one product relative to another. We're not talking about demand. We're not talking about supply. We're talking about income here. So income, the good news, it's the same equation. Percent change in quantity, except now it's the percent change in income, not price. So in this situation, it says the quantity went from 10 down to eight. So that's a decrease of 20%. And it told you that there was an increase in income of 10%. And so you found out that means it's negative two. Now negative matters. The negative here matters. Super important, the reason why is negative number means if the incomes go up and people buy less of this, which sounds weird, but people become rich and they go, ah, we're not gonna buy apples as much. That means this uh, apples must be an inferior good. So an inferior good is a negative number. Again, you got a number line here, income elasticity of demand. A positive number means the normal good. If the incomes go up and people buy more of it, right? Or incomes go down, people buy less of it. Still, it's gonna be a positive number. Positive number is a normal good. And a negative number means, you know, if incomes go up and people buy less of it, or if incomes go down and people buy more of it, that's gonna be an idea of inferior good. So also a zero means unrelated income. So if income goes up or down, it has no effect on whatever product this is. So how did you do? Did you do well? Did you get seven out of seven, six out of seven, five out of seven? I mean, what did you do? What was your score? Now, if you're not getting it, that's okay. It's time to practice. Take a look at my ultimate review packet. It's got more practice questions in there. Go back and watch the elasticity video I made that talks about this stuff. Let me know if this was helpful. Share this video with other people. Share it with your teacher. If your teacher doesn't know about these videos, get it out there so they can see it and share it with other people. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.